I see all my beautiful babies, boys and girls, and everyone in between. I hope y'all are feeling chill, chill, what's the oh, oh, doing, my honeys? I'm doing good, thank you. So, I was just passing by this beach, <laughs> and I was reminded because even though it, it looks a little bit rough, it's not that bad, but it reminded me of what happened last year. I never told anybody about this. I think I told one person, and she... <laughs> She got really like mad at me because I was like so like risk taking. So like when I see the beach and if I don't see anybody out there, I'm like, yay, all for me. Right? But I wasn't really paying attention to I mean the waves coming in were pretty big. They were coming in erratic and I wasn't paying attention to the way the water was going out. I got sucked into a fucking riptide. I must have been swimming for like about 30, 35 minutes. And as I was trying to swim back in this guy was headed out. I told him, I said, dude, don't go out there. I said, stay by the reef over there because it's safe. Because I said, there's a riptide. He didn't listen to me. I think maybe that where it was too late, but he got sucked out even further. I mean, I went out further than the riptide, but it was like when I came back, I couldn't come back in. And I was like struggling for about a half hour. But I tell myself like, don't panic. Because if you panic, you use up your oxygen too fast. So I was just, chilling just paddling just you know swimming and even as I thought I got towards a point where it wouldn't suck me back out uh -uh, not happening pull me right back out and uh, I think someone on the beach saw what the hell was happening and they called uh, the fire department and the fire department actually has uh, jet skis and so they had this guy came and got me first and then I told him about the other guy. I don't think he saw the other guy, but I told him about, about the other guy. And then they brought us in and asked me if I was fine. I said, I said, I was almost there. Like, you know, like I really almost had it, but thanks. So like, I remember like when I went to the beach, maybe like a month after that, when I went out, even when it was freaking calm and flat, I had like a little bit of that panic in my mind, like what if it happens again? And I told myself, shut the fuck up. Why the hell are you fucking doing that to yourself, you know? And we as human beings, we fucking do that. We fucking sabotage ourselves. Why? Because I think a lot of us are carrying around a lot of baggage, which you might not know, but it's being disguised that you don't know that it is uh, like either like poor self-esteem coupled with imposter syndrome right and I've spoken out about my imposter syndrome uh, two maybe three years back in my vlog um, I don't give in to that anymore uh, because my confidence me being confident me being content and happy with who the hell I am it totally fucking overrides that so it doesn't mean that I'm conceited or I am foolish to the fact that things might happen again it's like but I don't want to invite bullshit like that to come into my mind. It's the same thing like, like, you know, we do more damage to ourselves mentally than other people do. And I mean, I know moms and dads have a big hand at fucking up our freaking self-esteem big time. But I think what happens is we get so accustomed to our self-esteem getting fucking stomped on that the moment that we think for ourselves I can do this this is gonna be great I might be successful at it you know and then what happens is that one second that you're taking a breath that fucking thing is gonna sneak in it's gonna wedge in between your fucking cracks and it's gonna show you shit that's not even real because only what you create, only what you do, only what you make happen is real. All the stuff up here, beforehand, before, you know, all, all the planning and whatnot, planning is great, you know, conceptualizing is great. But when bad ideas get into your fucking head, before you even do something, just tell yourself that's just not fucking real, all right? What, okay, so today's vlog, I'm not really talking about anything because I'm talking about everything. I haven't done a vlog in like two months and so I'm just gonna be shooting off the top of my head. Uh, right now, as of today, I am actually doing my very first seven day fast. The, the longest I've ever fasted was for 99 hours, which is almost four days, but yeah, it's like four days, right? Uh, and like towards the end of that, I got fucked.
fucking hustle. Wasn't it other people? I got hustled at myself. Oh, I was like, I fucking hate you for making me do this, but you know what? I have learned from me learning myself is that when I put myself through very strenuous, very painful things, better things come out of it. So I'm looking forward to the fucking pain, but at the same time, I'm not just gonna be laying in bed and let it fucking eat me away. I'm being creative, but I'm not just gonna lay in bed and ooh, and depress and just sleep, because I can actually do that. I've actually been able to mentally make myself like a little bit depressed, so that way I just go to sleep, because I've done that back in like the, like 96. I lived with a cracked tooth for like eight months, and uh, my dentist goes, well, why the hell would you do that? He goes, how the hell did you do that? I said, like, I just turn on my side and I just sleep. I, I, I make myself go to sleep. He's like, wow. But yeah, so like I've, I have been able to do that. I have been able to psychically make myself go to sleep when I need to go to sleep. So, but I'm not going to do that. I will maintain being creative. In fact, remember my double stack red tailed hawk tail fan? So I took apart the top part because on the underside, you can still see the bamboo skewers. And I thought to myself, you know what I should do? Tape it up a little bit. So that way it's all like, you know, straight and everything. And then just do some uh, peel, uh, do some gourd stitch on them. I'm sorry, I keep calling it peel, but it's gourd stitch. But do some gourd stitch on them with some new size 13 bees I just got this morning. So I'm like super happy about that. All those feathers are back in the freezer, just, you know, making sure that, because like a lot of times, you know, like when I'm pairing feathers up for a project, so, you know, and sometimes I'm not paying attention to where the hell I got these feathers from, or if I even freaking inoculated them for the, for, from the rest of my feathers. So I gotta do that. So they're all in there and, you know, uh, so that way the feather mites don't fucking have a field day and just tear the shit out of them. So what I'm actually doing to actually make it harder on myself, which actually is making it better on myself, is I don't have any food in my house. I made sure that yesterday I finished all of the, uh, the perishables. So there are no more perishables in my house. And I mean, like I know that I could get weak as human beings do. Am I a human being? Maybe not like you. <laughs> but, <laughs> But it's true, I'm not like you. Uh, but I know I could get weak and go out and get some fucking fried chicken because fried chicken is my fucking demon. And uh, I, I love fried chicken so much, especially uh, homemade fried chicken is the worst because it's the best. But yeah, so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Um, Cause I, I get weak as human beings tend to do. We get comfortable, we get complacent. We get used to things being on a steady track, but you gotta fucking derail stuff every once in a while. Shake it up, right? That's what I'm doing, you know? Like I like to make things hard on myself because if I make things easy on myself, I won't do anything. I'll be a weak fucking bitch. You weak bitch, Kainoa. Um, I'm a man, I'm a man's man. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, actually speaking about that, you know, I've noticed that when, I mean, today I'm really casual because I'm going into my dental appointment. I have a deep cleaning today. And so I'm like wicked casual. And then a couple of weeks from now, I have an EEG, which I have to be hyper casual for it. But I'm not happy being casual, but it, you know. But anyway, so I noticed though that when I wear my really fancy clothes and I you know I wear that red bow in my hair and I, I'm really whew, exemplifying and expressing physically my sissy side. I noticed that heterosexual men are not so fucking macho because there have been times that I've been in a supermarket and people come behind me in the line and it's usually like some heterosexual male and no hate I love everybody. I got no fucking problem. But this is the thing. If you are so fucking macho, if you're so fucking confident of your fucking sexuality, why the fuck are you letting me throw you off your fucking game, bitch? They get so uncomfortable being around me. Being myself, right? 
So it's like, that's like a real test if you are where you should be in you knowing yourself. Because like I said many times in my fucking vlog, knowing yourself is bigger than fucking anything in this world. It's bigger than having an awesome career. It's bigger than having your own business. It's bigger than having a family, having a fucking colonial with a white picket fence. It's bigger than all that shit. Know thyself, conquer thyself, right? Because if you don't know who the fuck you are, then you're just skinwalking through life. You're just trading skins all the fucking time. Today I think I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. Today I think I'm gonna think I'm gonna, you know, do this. Tomorrow I think I'm gonna do that. Right? And it's like I can't trust people, and I don't like trusting people that I see and I fucking see you and I fucking know that you're wishy-washy. I don't want see that's why I'm so self-dependent is because I don't like putting my fucking faith into something that I need done or I need help with with someone else that I cannot fucking trust. I want somebody that when they say, yeah, I'll do it today, Tuesday. I'll do it Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock. And then they fucking do it. I love that. I don't like it when they're like, oh, was that today? Oh, fuck, I fell asleep. Oh, I didn't know. Like, see, like, this brings me to another topic that I've been really wanting to talk about. So a lot of times people disappoint other human beings, right? Because they'll fall short of their expectations, right? Or they won't come through, they don't follow through, right? Just like my faggot straight male friends. You know who the fuck you are. The ones that I, I'm always having to call them faggot because they're not stepping up to the plate. They're not doing what the fuck they said they're gonna fucking do. They don't show up at the designated time or the designated place. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? Most people would see that and they would get discouraged at these people and, and go, oh, you know, I can't, you know, trust that person. Which is true, you can't, right? One time, okay, I can forgive that because shit happens, life happens, traffic is a fucking thing. I, I fucking get it. But two or three times, that's when I see you are showing me who the fuck you are. You're showing me your incapacity for sticking to a fucking schedule. And I'm like, you know what? They're actually doing me a fucking service. They're showing me who the hell they are. They're showing me their fallacy. They're showing me their freaking limitations, right? So I'm like, they're showing me that I cannot trust them, which is actually helping me. Because why the fuck would I continually invest my time, my effort, my money, my resources, my energy into trying to kickstart the same fucking motorbike that just will not turn the fuck over. And I understand human beings are a failed fucking species, but if you fucking fail the next fucking time, learn from your fucking mistakes, evolve from that fuck up, and make better yourself tomorrow than the fuck you were yesterday. That's why when I get into like doing my beadwork and my crafting and stuff like that, like I remember that one time like my friend needed something. And he's like, oh shoot, I need this, I, I need this thing. I was like, yo bro, I got one. I think it was like a really like high grade freaking leather puncher. And he's like, yeah, you know, I have like four things I gotta freaking do with this. I'm like, well, cool. Um, yeah, you know, you know, you can borrow it. So I let him fucking borrow it. And then a month later, I hit him up. What the hell was his fucking name? Not that I want to expose him or just blast him, but I'm trying to remember his fucking name. But you can see in my fucking face, I was like, who was that fucker? Right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, a month later, I called him up. I'm like, hey, did you finish your project so I can, you know, get my leather punch back? Because I need some shit to do, you know? And he's like, oh, you know, I didn't even get started yet. I'm like, all right. And I said, I said, no problem. That's okay. Fucking, that's really bad. Those two words. When someone has something of yours and they don't return it in a timely manner or if somebody hurts you either emotionally or physically and they say, oh, I'm sorry, and you say, that's okay. Don't fucking say that's okay because it ain't fucking okay. When you say okay, you know what you're doing to your fucking mind? You're hurting your fucking psyche right there because what that will do is that will continually let people run the fuck over you and you don't want to fucking let that happen to you because that's been happening to me my whole goddamn life back in my youth in my 
teens, my late teens, my young adult life, I let people fucking dupe me left and right. There was like another three weeks that had gone by and I hit him back up. Oh, I remember his fucking name. <laughs> I wonder if he still lives here in Hawaii. Oh, God. Uh, and then, um, so, <laughs> if I can go fucking find his ass. Uh, he doesn't have my leather puncher anymore. But um, I remember, so I hit him up like three weeks later. I'm like, hey, did you fucking start your work? He's like, nope. I'm like, well, give it back to me now. He goes, yeah, but I'm going to use it. I said, fuck you. You're not going to fucking use it. I said, I tell you what, you can come over to my house and you can use it. Because right now, I have craft stuff that I need to do for other people that they're waiting on. So that's why, like, when I get into, like, doing my gorge stitch or if I'm, like, cutting leather or if I'm just stitching stuff or sewing or cutting or whatever it is having to do with my crafting I like being by my fucking self I need to get in my fucking zone put my earbuds in crank up some jams I like that I you know what I'm always talking to you all my babies about the positive and the freaking negative and one of the really major things being abandoned being neglected I see the positive and the negative in that because it fucking taught me self-reliance it taught me that I am all the fuck I'm ever gonna fucking need Sex, I can get that any fucking time, all right? But I like being alone more than I like being with other human beings. I mean, I talk with my bestie, Zylo, every freaking day, right? I talk with other friends, you know, at least once a week or at least once a month. But, like, I like being alone, you know? That's where I shut out that fucking bitch voice I have and I make shit happen. So I guess, you know, maybe everything in this vlog is kind of interrelated where you're talking about shutting out that bitch voice. Because I'm shutting out the bitch voice that says people are looking at you when you're all fancy and sissy, you know, like, like, good, good, get a fucking good look, get an eyeful, right? How, like, I might psych myself out from doing something really good for myself, like a good three-day fast, or like how I'm doing right now, a seven-day fast. There's a lot of fuckery going on. I remember when I was first like alerted to this knowledge of like not getting in my way. I was watching Joe Rogan's podcast like three years ago. There was an episode he did with Robert Downey Jr. I think it was like right after he finished Avengers Endgame. Joe and Robert Downey Jr. were talking about like life. And Joe said something about not getting in your own way. And Robert said, isn't that half of it? And I was like, holy crap, that's it. Every day I get up, I find a fucking distraction. I want to find something that allows me to get in my own fucking way. And fuck you, Kainoa, for that, really. Because, and it's like I said, you know, if you allow yourself to do two hours of either beadwork or crafting or something, then what's going to happen is I am going to find that fucking zone. I'm going to get caught in the slipstream and it's just going to take me away and it's just going to be so freaking awesome, right? So... You need, y'all need to freaking subdue your own bitch voice, your own voice. And when I say bitch, I don't, it does, it's not derogatory towards women. It's people in general who don't step up to the plate and do what they expect of themselves. Fuck what other people expect of them. What you expect out of yourself. It has nothing to do with being a female. I'm not using it in that freaking way. I'm using it in the way that you're a freaking wuss, you're a pussy, you're a weakling. But I don't even like using that word pussy because I love pussy, so. Why the hell would I use that as a derogatory terminology? But yeah, so like, do not let yourself get sucked into the undertow or the riptide, in my case, and allow yourself to quit. Do not self-sabotage. We do that fucking every fucking day. We're, we're self-sabotaging ourselves every day in some small way. And so the more that you know what the hell you're fucking doing to yourself, and the more that you can mitigate that and alter, evolve from that, and get that out of your fucking lifestyle, nope, that is no longer a part of my fucking life, and then you adopt something new, something healthy, something that challenges you all the time, then the better, right, and then then the less bitch voices you're going to fucking hear, and then you're going to see yourself nine months from now, and you're going to look back and you're going to go, whoa, that was me, yikes, gross, I can't believe that I lived that way for so fucking long. And that's what the hell I'm telling you all. How the hell I see myself now from how the hell I was 20 years ago. Good fucking Lord. 
I mean, even 10 years ago. Okay, so like, what, what year is this? This is 2024. Okay, so five years ago when I moved back here to Hawaii, you know, I still had, you know, I was actually presently facing all of my PTSD triggers with my dad, with all of these places, right, that this trauma still exists in. I had to face that and it was fucking tough. It was hard. And a lot of times, yeah, I bitched out. I know I bitched out, but look where the fuck I am today. Christmas no longer fucking bothers me. I'm looking forward to Christmas now. I am no longer seeing Christmas as, oh, that was that day that my dad brutally beat the shit out of me, tried to kick me out of the house. He hit me so fucking hard, so many freaking times that I was bruised from my forehead down to my fucking torso, and I couldn't leave the house for fucking weeks on end because I was just pelted with freaking bruises. I don't think about it in that way. I'm thinking about, I'm, you gotta fucking change the past. That's the, that's the way you change the past, is by changing your fucking future. Change the way you feel about the past today. Make it mas mejor, right? So I think I've said enough. Did I cram your brains? Did I over exceed the capacity of your mental faculties? If so, then you need to expand upon your capacity. I'm always talking about capacity, building your capacity, expanding upon your capacity. Anytime you sense that you've reached your capacity by some way, some means, push harder. Yeah, push harder. Put like, um, there's, a, there's a line from um, 1962, uh, Jason and the Argonauts, one of my favorite movies. There's this line that Argo says when they're going through the clashing rocks. I love that shit, man. I love that. And that's what I try to tell myself every fucking morning, man. Pull. Pull, push, fucking work. Do something till you fucking hurt yourself. Because it's only in hurting your body that your mind gets stronger. So your mind gets stronger that your body can pull and do more weight, right? Or do more things. You know what? I just thought of this thing. There's this song called The Lonesome Loser by The Little River Band. It's an awesome song. came out in the late 70s or in the 80s. But there's this part in the song where it says, Sit down. Take a look at yourself. Don't you want to be somebody? Someday somebody's going to see inside. You'll have to face up. You can't run and hide. Holy shit. Yeah, that's facts, baby. How do you want to keep hiding from your fucking self, right? Ah! Like, don't... Am I the only one that gets uncomfortable when I don't step up to the plate, crack the fucking bat, and knock you out the goddamn zip code? Right? Am I the only one that gets upset? There's gotta be other people out there that don't like themselves when they don't do what the fuck they're supposed to fucking do. For themselves, really. Not for anybody else, but for themselves. Which, essentially, when you do something good that makes you better, it betters fucking everybody around you, okay? It has uh, like a like a stone in a pond effect. So just make it happen. Do stuff, right? I know you can do it. I know that you can fucking do it. But you know what the fuck I think doesn't fucking matter. It's what the fuck you think. And what the fuck you do, motherfuckers. And you don't have to have this wild Matterhorn type of goal. Little goals are better. The more little goals, the better. Because you'll realize that even though you haven't done, you know, El Capitan, you've done more little goals, which means that you can, you're gonna know in your mind that you can continually do this again and again. And you won't trip yourself up. Fuck that shit. You gotta tell yourself sometimes, my baby. Sometimes you gotta tell yourself, fuck me, myself, right? With your own name, right? Like I'm always saying, fuck you, Kainoa. Because it's true. And you know, I hear myself when I'm fucking editing, and I'm like, yes, fucking blast me. Really, seriously, blast me because I fucking need it. You know, I'm not out here just giving all this wonderful free advice and not applying it to myself. What kind of fucking jackass would I be? Stupid. Then you really shouldn't fucking listen to me if I'm not fucking applying this shit myself. If I'm just being a fucking yacker. 
fun with that. So make sure it happen. With that said, just remember that happiness and success are subjective. Be inspired by others, but motivate yourself. Be where you want your experience to be and just stay there, letting patience and presence be your guide. Have confidence in yourself, but don't believe your own hype. Don't take yourself too seriously and remember to make fun of yourselves. Take care, much love. Until I see you all again. Peace can most babies. Reach out, speak up, and speak out. And please slow down and stop for wildlife. To Luma, babies.